it's Mike from Infinity Wax and welcome to episode 3 of the E46 project. Today we're going to be decontaminating the vehicle, giving it a wash prior to going to get the mechanical work done. Following on from that it's then going to go over to a body shop to have all the rust issues repaired and resprayed. So today we're just going to do a quick video and focus just on getting the car as clean as it possibly can be on the exterior. Let's just take a look at the process. Hi everyone, it's Ollie from Infinity Wax. What we're going to do is going to mix some citrus pre-wash to take most of the grime off the car. So, I'll put 500ml of citrus concentrate onto this IK container and that made us 5 litres of ready to use product. We're going to just spray on the car to remove most of the contamination of it and the grime, the road grime has been building up for years. So, let's just go with that and see how we get on with it. Okay, so now that we've used the pre-wash, the next step is going to be to use power foam. The reason we're going with power foam is that's our best cleaning snow foam, wipeout snow foam as a pH neutral. So we want power foam's alkaline active ingredient just to do the cleaning power and get as much off the car without actually contacting the paintwork first. We're going to use it at 10 to 1, which is one of the stronger dilutions for power foam. If you look on the side of the bottle here, it tells you you can go up to 100 to 1 with the snow foam. So it is very, very concentrated. But we're going to go with 10 to 1 on this and let's see how we get on. A little tip is to avoid foaming in the bottle. Now we're going to use it in a, a jug here. You can do the exact same process in a bottle. We are actually going to fill it up with water first to 900, which is there. And then fill it from 900 to 1 litre with the detergent. Okay, so that's exactly 10 to 1. We're going to stick it in the snow foam bottle. We're using the extra foam lance here. Try and avoid spilling it as well. It always helps. Yeah. Maybe use a bigger jug. A bigger jug would be ideal. So, a little bit of foam, but it's uh, a lot less than if you were to put the snow foam in first, then turn the hose on, for example. So, let's get the snow foam on, see what happens, and then we might just have some makeup remover pads somewhere and we're going to see how much dirt is actually remaining on the car after the pre-wash stage. So, power foam's been on now for, what would you say, 10 minutes? About 10 minutes, aye. Eh? About 10 minutes. Dwell time's really, really good on this. So, what we're going to do is we're going to rinse the car off now, 
that's the majority of the pre-wash stage done. So all we're going to do is just see how much dirt's left on the car. Use like a makeup remover pad or something similar to that just to see what's left. Then we're going to use pure shampoo watermelon today, limited edition. Yeah, we can use that. Pure shampoo, we're going to contact wash the car and then we're going to move on to the next stage, okay? Okay, so that's the pre-washing stage of the car basically over with now. As you can see, visually the car is a lot cleaner. Um, we had loads and loads of mud around this area here. So what we have is a couple of makeup remover pads that we borrowed from WS Detailing in there. And just want to see, you can see there is still some dirt on the car. We're not going to get 100% off with the pre-wash alone. But it was just to see how, how much it's actually taken off. So a couple of swipes over there. You can see on the pad there is still some dirt remaining. Um, this area here, we give it a really thorough rinse. And actually I'm quite surprised, there's very, very little there. And the reason for that is this was much heavier mud. So it's actually sometimes heavier dirt like that can come off easier. Whereas the dirt up here has been more ingrained traffic film type of stuff. So we've no idea when this car was last washed, to be honest. It could have been a month, could have been a year in all honesty, um, probably longer than a month by the looks of it. So the next stage is we've taken 90-95% off the, the traffic film off the car. Um, now we need to contact wash the car. So we're going to use pure shampoo. In this case it will be the watermelon limited edition. If you're watching this a month, a year down the line, that might not be available. But in that case it would just be pure shampoo, which is a really high concentration shampoo very very slick, lubricates the panel perfectly to, to minimise or avoid marring the car. So, um, And just bear in mind with this vehicle we are going to be fully correcting it so we're not going to be focusing too much on a safe wash with this although we're going to do it where possible. Um, we don't want to add anything to the car but we are uh, we're, we are going to be fully correcting it and it's going into a body shop to have four panels painted so um, the idea is just to get it as clean as possible today ready for that stage. Okay so for the next stage we're going to be contact washing the vehicle um, Ollie's got the watermelon pure shampoo here. Yep. So what we've done is we've half filled the bucket. We're going to apply approximately 50 ml. 50 ml, just to give us enough. Roughly, um, a few, a good few drops into the bucket, foam it up. Um, I've also got the new wheel shampoo here as well. So we're going to use that to actually just not to clean the wheels, but to clean the tires at this stage. So again, I'm going to use approximately 50 ml in the bucket here. I'm going to brush it into the tyres and just get all that kind of brown, horrible crime out of there. Get them back to looking as fresh as possible. Something that's going to suit the wheels now that they've been yeah, done. Yeah, of course. We need to make the Infinity tyres look good. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs>
So now that we've done the pre-wash stage, we're now going to move on to the decontamination. We've dried the car just now, just to allow the tar remover to work more efficiently. Then we're going to go on to liquid fire, our fallout remover, and then finally we're going to clay bar the car. So we'll apply the tar and glue remover. And we'll have to let it sit for a little bit. Now that the tar and glue has been in the car for a few minutes, what we'll do is just grab a microfiber cloth and gently just wipe it over to remove any contaminants. Okay, so another quick tip for stubborn tar and glue. So this can be applied to tar or to adhesive on the vehicle. Areas like where this M badge was located before that Ollie ripped off, thankfully did that horrible, horrible aftermarket M badge. So what you can do, um, if you have areas like these that are going to be very hard or you need to work it aggressively to get off to kind of minimise that, what you can do is take up, take makeup remover pads, just carefully spray some tar and glue on them and just stick them over the area. And this just allows the tar and glue remover to sit there for longer. You can saturate the pads. And the nozzle it gets off. And they will just stick to the area like that. There you go. Okay, so leave that for approximately five minutes, sometimes 10 if it's really, really bad and you should be able to just wipe that adhesive straight off there. So we've come to the area that Michael put the, the pads in there. That was the heaviest of the tar and glue in there. There was quite a lot of uh, glue in there because of the badge was there. What we'll do is we'll just remove it and see, you know, what's happened. Michael, that's a great tip, Michael. That's, uh, that's taking quite a bit off. If I can just have a quick look on it. It's left some residue there. Because it was so old, obviously, it needed quite a bit of time to weld back. That's done pretty well because that was a big, massive bit of glue in there. Now that the glue remover has been removed, it's been wiped off, what we'll do is we'll do a quick wash just to remove the rest of it if there's any contamination in there. Now that Ollie's done the tar and glue removal stage, wiped that away, rinsed the car and dried it again, the next stage is going to be to remove any remaining fallout remover. So fallout is essentially iron particles which can come from um, fallout in the atmosphere, but mainly from brake rotors. So every time you brake, tiny little pieces of metal can come off the discs and embed themselves in the paint mark and on the wheels. Now luckily, we're not going to have to do the wheels because they've just been refurbished at Custom Coatings. However, we are going to have to stick it on the bodywork just to take off any residual contamination. When we do that stage, then we'll move on to taking any remaining embedded contamination in general, whether it's fallout or anything else. We're going to use the clay bar just to remove that final stage. So this is stage two out of three. So the final stage of the decontamination, now that we have rinsed off all the remaining fallout remover, we also put snow foam on there as well, just to help pull off any residual chemical. The 
car's still wet, which is fine because the next stage is to clear the vehicle. So what we're going to do is use this fine clay bar here. The car, although it has contamination, it doesn't warrant the use of a heavy or a medium clay bar at this stage, we don't think. What we've done is we've cut down the clay into a nice manageable size here and finally the clay lubricant, which actually is 100 to 1 dilution of pure shampoo. So as a general rule of thumb, what I like to do, even just put 25ml into a bottle with warm tap water is absolutely fine. There is no need to use a dedicated clay lubricant. All you want to do is have a product that's going to lubricate the clay on the panel. Pure shampoo is the best possible thing for that. Plus, it will not add any kind of protection or any additives whatsoever to the surface, which you're about to then polish or protect. So Michael's done the easy part, okay? And I have to do the graft, as always. <laughs> <laughs> so with the clay bar, if it's, today it's quite cold in here. Oh, it's about four degrees or something like that. So all I'll do is... Feels like minus four. It does feel like that, but you know, and that's why I've got my hat on. But anyway, what we'll do is the clay bar, I need to warm the clay bar, so we'll just put in our hands and then just a, a little bit of pressure just to, to flatten the clay bar and just make it workable. Uh, once it's flat and workable and then the size that you want it or to use it, then just put it against the surface a little bit there like that. And then what we'll do is we just get the clay lube and more lubrication obviously the car has then the better it is and minimizes any marring or any potential damage so just put it there and just gently just back and forth just in straight lines make sure that the surface is always lubricated if you see it's drying then just grab the lubrication or the lube and just apply a little bit more very important to mention here that unlike the guys at Speed 6 Detailing, you cannot use Durex for this process. It has to be a dedicated clay lubricant. <laughs> so we'll just turn this section here, just to show you guys. So it's, it's not too bad, is it? I mean, it's I've seen a lot worse bad. than that. I've seen a lot worse, but as I said, you know, you, you put the tarring glue, you put the iron foil remover, you still, the best practice is the clay, the old fashioned way clay bars are great for that. It's, it is the final stage, isn't it really? It is the final stage, yeah. Okay, so the clay stage has now been completed. What this has done is removed any contamination that you can feel on the paintwork, which we couldn't remove using the tar and glue remover or liquid fire. Essentially, the paint is now completely stripped and ready to be polished. Um, before we do any of that kind of stuff, it is going to go to the body shop to get fixed. As you can see, the contamination on the car was I would say moderate to not too severe. So we only used a fine clay bar and it has picked up, we've used both sides in it and it's picked up a reasonable amount of contamination. Nothing too, too severe, we've seen much worse than this, which is a good sign, it means the owner cared for the car, you know, previously at some stage, so. Um, but yeah, that's the clay stage done. Now we're gonna rinse the vehicle off, dry it, and it's on to the next stage. So that's been episode three. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it and hopefully learned something along the way there. Um, There's more to come for the episode four. There is a lot more to come. We've got the full interior to do. We have mechanical work to get done. Uh, thanks to Jack's Auto Car Care who are sponsoring yep, that episode. That's... And also we're getting body work done as well. So there is loads and loads of stuff to happen. We reckon there might be about 10 episodes worth out of this car. So, so stick with us guys, because we've got a lot of stuff coming along your way. So. Obviously, any suggestions at all, pop them in the comments below. We read absolutely everything. So, once Michael again, replies as well. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. <laughs> um, so, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you on episode four. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.